Hey guys, it's Danny. Today it is the 1st of November. It is time to recap the freshly opened orchids that we had in the month of October. As you guys know, with all of these videos, you do have the possibility to vote for your favorite one this month. So in the description, you will find a link towards a straw poll where you can express your vote. And at the end of the year, we will have a winner, the most popular orchid in my collection. And at the end of the video, I will show you my African violets in bloom as well because they're just so lovely. So stay tuned for that. And with that said, let's get started because these videos tend to get rather long. First off, we have Brassavolana dosa crossed with Lelia purpurata variety carnea. I'm not entirely sure if this cross has a name, a registered name or a common name just yet. Anyway, look how beautiful it is. Doesn't it remind you of something? To me, it looks very similar to the BC Maikai, which I have, but it's not in bloom. But it is a bigger version than that. The flower is quite a lot larger than typical Brassavolas, definitely larger than the Brassavola nodosa because of that purpurata influence, which is a wonderful orchid as well. This is a fragrant orchid, but it doesn't smell in the nighttime. It smells nothing like the Nodosa, actually. It borrowed the scent of the Lelia purpurata, which is a really nice, sweet type of fragrance. If you have the purpurata, you know what I'm talking about. If not, imagine a sort of Dendrobium nobili, not the one that smells like hyacinths, but the sweet one. And this is how this orchid smells like to me. It is wonderful. This year, only one bloom yet again. I'm thinking this orchid can produce two blooms, but if you look at it a little bit, you can see it has been slightly, slightly set back. So the last pseudobulb which was in bloom was this one, then it created a tinier one and then a bigger one with the bloom. That is my fault. I wasn't careful with its roots, but now she's doing a lot, lot better. So hopefully in the future, we're gonna have more than one bloom. Next up, here we have a Phalaenopsis type Dendrobium. This is Dendrobium Blue Happiness. It is, I believe, a commercial name, not a registered name. And I'm not sure if it is registered, so we'll just call it like that. This is an orchid which I saved from Ikea a long time ago. I'll link you to the video down below and look at him today. I really love the color of the flowers and I have to say this year the flowers are a little bigger than typical. I used to believe this orchid had smaller flowers than all of my dendrobiums, but it's really not the case. I think it was just stress, setback, all of those things that are associated with a rootless orchid. But this year he looks fabulous. This is not a fragrant orchid. There's nothing perfumey about it to my nose. If it smells like something, maybe a little vegetation. So I would not hope for a very lovely perfume from this orchid, but definitely I would look forward for a multitude of blooms because this orchid creates really, really rich flower spikes. Down below in the description, you will find my care tutorial for these orchids as well. So do check it down below. They're very easy to grow as long as you have strong light and warmth. Next up here we have another Dendrobium phalaenopsis. This is Polar Fire, same story. This is a commercial name. I'm not entirely sure if it is registered or what the registered name is. Of course, if you know more than me, leave us a comment down below in the description. The Polar Fire was my first ever Dendrobium six years ago or more than six years ago. It wasn't this particular orchid, but definitely this variety. So it does hold a special place in my heart, even though it is not a fragrant orchid, the same as the Blue Happiness. I just love this gradient effect it has on its flowers. A few interesting things about this orchid, the lip has a very fuzzy portion if you take a closer look. And my particular one produced a pretty strange flower this year. There you have it, this one. It is the first to open and it has a mobile lip. Now, this orchid should not have a mobile lip. Everything should be very, very sturdy, but this particular flower is just interesting. And this is a little bug, a little green flying bug. I don't think it was harmful. So these are the two dendrobiums that I have in full bloom right now. The other ones are still working on opening their flowers. Next up, we have the Bratonia Shello Bokika, which we had in bloom about two months ago, but it decided to put out another flower spike. And isn't it gorgeous? Sad thing is, it is attacked by mealybugs. The flower spike, I mean, the orchid is kind of perfectly clean, but mealybugs do prefer flowers. I have a video on it down below in the description, you'll find it. I managed to control them to some extent on the flowers by using isopropyl alcohol. Being that the orchid is outside at the moment while it has a flower spike, there is a very high chance that it still attracts mealybugs. So until the flower is done, she's residing outside. 
This is a beautiful Brassia hybrid, which is a little fragrant during daytime, smells slightly sweet like some Brassias do. Others smell peppery. This one has more of a sweet scent, but I wouldn't call it very perfumey. I love the flowers because they are large and spidery. They're almost as big as my palm. And I do really like the color combo. It is a very vigorous hybrid, but it's not a tiny one. And the Okika differentiates itself from the Tolkien by the variegation on the leaf. So even if the orchid is not in bloom, it is still very, very interesting. If you really like variegation, definitely if you find this one and the other one, I would go for the Okika variety. The flowers are the same, colors are the same, everything is the same except for the foliage. Next up, here we have the Bellara Peggy Ruth Carpenter. Currently, it is classified as an Alisara. And we've seen this orchid in the same video talking about the mealybugs. This one has mealybugs as well. It resides outside. One of the flowers sadly didn't make it. I have been spraying it nonstop, so I'm not surprised, but sadly the display is slightly compromised. And even though we do still have a bud to open, I decided to film it now because I'm not sure how long these flowers will last. So this is a very slightly fragrant Bellara. It smells slightly peppery in the daytime. Most Bellara smell like that. They're not my favorite fragrance wise, but they are absolutely my favorite intergeneric because the flowers are so beautiful and so elegant and the Peggy Ruth Carpenter is one of the most elegant of them all. It is also a very common hybrid. You can find it in flower shops from time to time. And if you love Bellaras, I would definitely, definitely have this one in my collection as well. Next up, here we have a Tulumnia. I haven't had a Tulumnia in bloom for ages. This is a no ID though. It's one of the Tulumnias that Bumblebee sent me in our orchid swap. I'll link you to the video down below. And it has bloomed and it's so beautiful. I absolutely love this baby pink color. It's really sweet. You might not know I'm not a fan of cool toned purples, but this one I really, really like. Fuchsias, this one, the color of the pot which I chose to match the flowers, these types of pinks I do like. Anyway, this orchid is not fragrant, Tulumnias are not known to be fragrant. I think there is one that I heard might have a scent, but I'm not completely sure about it. This one doesn't smell like anything. It looks a little bit like the Jairac pink, which I find to be kind of randomly named. I'm not sure if it's a registered name, but there are so many Tomnia hybrids that it's hard to know what I have. Anyway, happy to have it. I have a little branch developing here, which we will have in bloom next month. And the orchid made a full, full recovery. They used to be slightly rootless. And a little side note, I'm not keeping the Tulumnias in the net pots anymore. They did fantastic like that, but I had to water a little bit too frequent. So I put them in these really, really tiny pots. They're adapting wonderfully and I don't have to water them so often, so we're both happy. But yeah, that's why the setup change. Next up, we have an orchid which I did not think I would actually film this year in bloom. This is the Vilstakara Melissa Briane Shady Lady. I'm not sure if it's a Vilstakara still, but you'll have the proper name in the description. This is one of the saved Oncidiums. I will share with you down below in the description the video I purchased. Well, not only 10, but quite a lot of Oncidiums in the springtime and they were just in the poorest condition. And she is one of them. She made a full recovery. She doesn't look spectacular. It is to be expected, but she has been doing much better than others. And look at this, she put out a set of blooms. Now the flowers are really, really, really pretty, but they have a weird scent. For whatever reason, they smell kind of fishy to me, and that's not a metaphor. I can see how it's not actually a fish smell, but to me it is. So yeah, I'm not a fan of the fragrance, which is not sweet, it's not peppery, it's something very weird. So I would not purchase this orchid for the scent, but the flowers are beautiful. So here's hoping that in the future it will do better and better and better. So far, the evolution is really, really good. Next up, the Oncidopsis Cheyenne, and yes, it does have red flowers. A few bad things have happened to this orchid. First, I dropped it on the floor and broke some leaves. As you can see, one I had to cut and I'm afraid these ones I would have to cut as well. But I felt so sorry for them because they're brand new leaves and they look so good. But yeah, you can see here, they're definitely bent. Second, 
It had some mealy bugs as well, which I removed manually, not as many as the other ones, but still there was a few because it resides on the same shelf as the Bellara. And third, it did not receive as much light as the Bellara or as the Bretonia. The Bellara was on the same shelf but higher up, this guy was on the bottommost shelf, which receives the less light. The Bretonia grew under artificial light, so we're not gonna compare them, but this guy really could have used more light because now I don't have such a showy flower spike as last year. Last year we had two flower spikes and it's not a root system issue or anything of the sorts. The orchid looks very, very well, but it is a light issue. Anyway, all of that aside, the orchid is beautiful. I don't detect a fragrance with this one. There might be something there, but nothing perfumey, nothing strong in any case. And it is indeed a really, really beautiful red color. Although the lip is rather orange. This might not be the only Cheyenne that I have. In the spring, I saved a bunch of Oncidiums which didn't have flowers. And one of them is producing a flower spike and the buds are super red. They kind of look like this one. So we'll see if I have a double. If I do, one of them will go away in a giveaway. But yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful orchid. It's not a fussy orchid, but it kind of does require more bright light. I try to keep it in something my Miltoniopsis would do okay in, but she needs more than that to bloom well. Otherwise, the new growth looks very... Oh, oh that was close. Okay, so the new growth looks very, very good. The leaves look very good, except for the fact that they're broken. Um, but yeah, everything looks very good, but the light, that was an issue. So I will be placing this one under artificial light as soon as my boyfriend has a little time for me to install the LED panels. Next up here we have a premiere. This is the first time this orchid blooms for me. It's not an old orchid in my collection though. At the beginning of the year, I made an order to class an orchidine. I'll link you to the video down below. It was a review type of video and this is one of the orchids that I purchased. This is Encyclia cochleata crossed with Anaculum septum. I don't know, again, if it has a registered standalone name or we need to call it by the parentage. It doesn't matter though, what matters is that the orchid is absolutely beautiful. It has a very, very interesting shape. If you know the cochleata, you know that it does produce, let's call them upside down flowers. And this orchid does have a few non-recipinated flowers, but they're not all like that. What I love most about it are the curly sepals and petals, and overall the very wild shape. Now, the good news is I don't detect any fragrance with the sore kid. I had a few encyclias in the past that looked similar to this one with a pretty bad scent. This one to me does not smell like anything really and that's good news for me. I was hoping it wouldn't smell like anything. And because one of its parents, the cochleara, is a sequential bloomer, I'm hoping this one will be as well. So far, I do still have two buds left to open, but I decided to film it now because I think one of the oldest flowers is about to drop. Do you see it's a little yellow in comparison to the other ones? The stem is still green and the flower is still pretty stiff, but I don't know how long it will still be in bloom. And if this is a sequential bloomer, then it will continue to bloom for a few months, hopefully. Anyway, absolutely love this orchid. It has done great. The new growth grew very, very well. We have a good root system. I do have a pseudobulb which dried. I will have to remove it. But that's an old pseudobulb the orchid came with. Other than that, it did absolutely fantastic. I kept it in bright light, actually. I kept it in the growth space, not outside, and it grew very, very nice. I like the new growth. I like the color. It looks very well. And I love the flowers. They're so wild and twisty. Look at this one. So the sepal here curled around the petal. Isn't that cute? So yeah, definitely, I love this orchid. It was such a good purchase, even if it's not fragrant. I really, really like the flowers. Next up, another premiere for me and a first time bloom for this orchid. This is Dendrobium venustum. It is a species. And this is an older orchid in my collection, but we've been through some stuff. It has been a little set back. Now though, it appears to be very healthy. It grows vigorously and it produced a flower spike. And it's so cute. I purchased this orchid for the flowers because I was really intrigued with the freeliness of the lip. And indeed, it's really pretty. But the flowers are tiny. I don't know why in my mind the flowers were a little bigger, maybe the size of the Dendrobium phalaenopsis, but no, they are pretty tiny. 
two centimeters or so, one inch or so, and they are not fragrant. It is really, really easy to care for. I did not keep it outside, but in my grow space, in bright light, cat lay light. And other than that, I made sure to water it whenever the medium was dry. Fun fact, with this orchid, it is deciduous. Once a year, it will lose all of its leaves and the canes will be bare. Every year, it produces a new cane, which will be green. For the first year, it will bloom. And then in the winter time, it will lose all of its leaves once again. During this period, I do not fertilize. I withhold water. I take a look at the older pseudobulbs. If they get very shriveled, I will give it a little bit of water, but I don't find that it requires much watering because it's not growing. In the springtime, it produces a new growth, and at the end of the growing season, of summer in my case, it produces flowers. And they are so, so pretty. It reminds me a little bit of the Dendrobium antenatum, if you know that one, because it has these twisty petals which look like antennae. Antennae? How do you pronounce that? Anyway, really pretty Dendrobium, and that lip is wonderful. I really, really like this orchid, and I'm happy it did well in the end, even if I messed up its care initially. Next up, we have the Phalaenopsis, formerly known as Doritis pulcherima. I'm just gonna call it Doritis because it is pretty different than the regular Phals. We have two little flowers on this little branch and also some buds to come. Now, at some point, it was a little chilly in the grow space for like one night and this orchid really liked it and it bloomed. But then it got hot again and the orchid did not want to produce any more buds and finally now it's cool again and the orchid is growing buds. So as long as it's cool, she produces buds, at least for me, hence why we only have two flowers now, but quite a lot of buds forming here. This year, she is looking spectacular. Last year when I purchased it, I could swear it didn't look like this. It looked very similar to a regular Phalaenopsis or the flowers were a little weird. They didn't last all that long. And I tried to find some footage, but I didn't, not sure in what video I featured it. Anyway, bottom line, last year I didn't really like how it bloomed. This year the flowers look incredible. They look so, so wild. And this is the white variety, by the way, and not the polaric variety. So far, two little flowers and hopefully a lot more buds to come. And the last orchid we're looking at is the Phalaenopsis violacea, which is a sequential bloomer and it continues to bloom flower after flower. Mine has two flowers at once tops and then they kind of last about a month and then they fade away. So you can see we have another bud here and actually the previous flower just fell off just now. The Phalaenopsis violacea is one of the most popular Phalaenopsis species because it is beautiful and it smells fantastic. It is very sweet to my nose, it's a little bit cinnamony, and to be fairly honest, it's not very, very powerful. Definitely you can detect it, but it's not overwhelming. I absolutely adore it, and I do hope that with time, as it grows, it produces more and more flower spikes. I don't have the sort kit long enough to be super old, and also, I don't know where the tag is, but mine is a indigo variety. There are other varieties on the market as well, such as a more, let's say, bluer variety, a pale pink variety. If you search for it, you'll see what I mean. And in the description, you'll find a link about care for summer blooming Phalaenopsis. And that is about it with the orchids. But now let's take a little look-see at the African violets. So this is the first shelf of African violets. I'm not gonna go through each and every one of them, but if you like a video with them in bloom or ID videos, do let me know down below in the description. But since I purchased these guys quite recently, not all of them are in full bloom. Some of them have buds, but some do have a lot of flowers. And my most favorite one is this one. It is LF Freezing Rain. Look at that, the flowers are huge. They're not even double, I think they're triple. They have so many petals and the flowers tend to get so heavy that they start to just fall over. It's beautiful, but all of them are beautiful. And as you can see, I do have quite a few that are just starting to bloom now. And down below on the lower shelf, I have some miniatures which are starting to bloom. There is another one of my favorites. It is the Princess Saturn Dot. Let me give you a better angle. There, I think you can see it better now. It does have huge, huge flowers. Let me just show you. Look at that. I pollinated them, so I put some tags. I filmed it. It's going to be for a different uh, video. And next to that, look at that. 
that was not supposed to look like that, but it sported, meaning it created a mutation and voila, I have a chimera. <laughs> so this is the first flower, it's not a perfect chimera, but the one in the back kind of is, and it's beautiful and the flowers are super, super, super large. I put this little blue tape because I do have some thrips going on and I wanna see if the blue tapes actually do anything, but I'm trying other treatments as well. But yeah, these are my African violets and they're so stunning. But I will feature them in bloom in a separate video. And I think that is about it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching, hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to vote down below in the description. And you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, African violets too. And if you wish to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.